for 30 years. And I thought the only way, the only way I could stalk you would be do a podcast episode. And then <laughs> one, I'm going to get you on. And that's how it rolls around here now. <laughs> so, that's so nice. I really appreciate you. I, uh, obviously through, um, through Gary Mann and, uh, yeah. Gary said, Denny, you know, we've had some, we've had some, some nice, I've been very fortunate to have some stars like yourself on here. We had Joel Madden from uh, Good Charlotte, lead singer. You know mm -hmm. him. His, and, uh, mm -hmm. and then uh, we had Rex Ryan last week, the head coach for the um, oh wow the former head coach. And and we've had some yeah. um, Tim Decay, some guys. And then we get we've had nine year old kids, and and they're always fun to interview. Oh, cool. Like that too. So uh, what we <laughs> did, Rex, make you show him his feet, or no? You know what, man? I didn't even want to address the feet thing. But then, <laughs> Again, he's pretty I, open about it i think he is he talks <laughs> but he he if you get a chance not that you're a big denny barrett swing hard listener but rex it's all about rex and i didn't really you know with buddy ryan and rex and his brother roy or his brother rob it was uh mm -hmm. it was cool but that here's very i'm a big ego guy I've been doing this i'm a tough guy and, and then all of a sudden i get on the screen and 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 uh, now I, I just lost all. I'm sweating right now. It's absolutely <laughs> uncomfortable. So we'll figure it out. Hey, we're here. The podcast is called, is called Swing Hard, in case you hit it. And we use mm -hmm. that as a, as a reference in life, as well as mm -hmm. in work and in, in, in baseball, of course. I've always told mm -hmm. kids, man, we have all these coaches out there that give them instruction on how to hit and how to stride. And then, man, finally, I just say to him, hey, hey kid, just swing hard in case you hit it. You ever, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've gone to, have you gone to, did you play youth baseball or youth sports at all? Yeah, I mean, I played uh, just softball growing up uh, until high school when it was like, oh, everybody's taking this really seriously. And like, we didn't ever had money to go to um, camps or anything. And so right. I was never really that good. My sister played fast pitch. She was a little bit better. I have a younger yeah. sister. But now, you know, like, I mean, we live right next to the Harvard Westlake baseball field. So it's kind of like, like we, my, and my son is too. And he's, he's more obsessed with golf than baseball, but he loves watching baseball. And he has a book called good night baseball. It's like his favorite okay. thing in the whole world. And he just learned to lift his leg and throw like a okay. pitcher. So it's okay. really cute. Yeah. We teach these. You know, and again, I don't know anything. This is, let's just start this. I'm with the Sarah. Tiana, am I pronouncing <laughs> that correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sarah, actress, writer, comedian, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I've told all my friends uh, when I found out you're going to be on Reno nine one one, and 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 there's other stuff in there. But I did see in Reno. Uh, uh, wait, is, it, is that what's called Reno? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what's called, right? And so yeah. I, I, I'm just a big sports guy, but I did I I do watch intelligent shows like Reno nine one one just to get get information. <laughs> And so I got, uh, I've seen you so many times. And, and so, uh, Sarah has, Sarah has taken time to be part of our swing hard podcast. And, uh, and I, and I appreciate you coming on with us, my friend. Yeah, no, I'm honored to be here. Any, any chance to talk about baseball? I'll talk about it. No, I, I heard that now I'm no rich Eisen and I had to really <laughs> humble myself when I saw the interview with you and rich and your husband, uh, Chris, am I saying Chris. that correctly? Uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh. Uh -huh. And watching you after the the World Series victory this year, as the Atlanta Braves won the darn thing, and uh, I'm obviously a Dodger fan, so I oh. wasn't really thrilled about how this all took place. <laughs> okay, Freddie Freeman, he's a local boy down here, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping he leaves you those Braves this year and comes to the Giants or the Dodgers. We're trying to finish that thing out, you know. Maybe he'd be better on the Giants, actually. That, that yeah, might be better for you. Maybe, uh, it, you know, I also heard in that interview, you don't like going to Dodger games. Well, I go to Dodger games all the time. Uh, I, I go by myself. Uh, like Chris and I have agreement that I can at least go to one by myself because yeah. I like to keep score. I like to sit really close. You know what I mean? So it's like, do I want to buy two tickets that close? No, uh, oh. but I can buy one really, really close, like right next to the you know front row, right by the dugout. It's my favorite. Yeah. So I can see, I used to sit by the bullpen all the time so I could see who was coming in, but, um, but now I just sit by the dugout so I can just ogle at all oh. my favorite Braves. But I, you know, my grandmother taught me to keep score. So I'm like really into keeping score at the games. 
but I just didn't want to go to the playoff games because every time I go see the Braves play the Dodgers, we lose. Yeah. And, yeah. and I was like, oh, I'm not going to go to the playoff games because I don't want to jinx it. And, and they were like, you don't lose every time. And I'm like, I have the receipts. Like I, I, I have oh all the scorecards. God. Oh like, my gosh. You guys had our number, but the problem that what you guys did wrong, I thought in the world series is that you guys always beat us at the end of the game with your relievers. Mm. You never be, you know, you, you, um, mm. you couldn't beat us with your starters. We would score all these scores, uh, runs at the beginning of the game and then not be able to score any after the sixth inning, seventh inning, most of the time. And then when we played you in the playoffs, you started your relievers first and closed with your starting That's pitching, right. which is why we beat you at the end because right. we were beating your starting pitching, which we had done all year. It was like a really weird, I mean, you know, you know what? I'm still trying to get over it right now, Sarah. Yeah, it I, bet. A little I bit understand. To hear that, Trust you know? me, I, I, the year before it was really hard for me to get over it. You know, like during yeah. the COVID season, that was a really tough loss for me. And and I've seen a lot of tough losses as an Atlanta fan. I, I could have, I was waiting the whole time for you guys to end up winning. I just, I was on the front patio of the comedy store when it happened. And I just started crying. I mean, I can't, oh. I've cried a lot over sports. I haven't cried that much in the comedy store, but yeah. I did. Hey, there. is a, uh, was it tough? So you're, I'm telling you, I have Sarah Tiana and I'm telling you, I don't know your age. I don't need to get pros. You look like you're about, at 21 years old right now on <laughs> yeah, right. I'm telling you you were around though then those early years when when Atlanta yeah. wasn't very good right oh no yeah I'm 44 so uh, I just turned 44 last week that's right I have been a Braves fan since I was a kid obviously um, we moved to Georgia when I was five from Northern California so most of my family are Oakland A's fans or Giants fans right. my grandmother was an Oakland A's fan she's the one that taught me to keep score yeah. Um, wow. but, uh, yeah, we would go to Braves games when I was a kid, like you, nobody, like you'd have two extra tickets, you'd put them on your windshield and then you'd come back and there'd be four. Like, <laughs> nobody went and you could just sit wherever you wanted. Like, it was like, yeah, it was, it yeah, was yeah. dismal. So I, in the Ted Turner channel, God, you're bringing back my, you. I'm 58. TV, so yeah. I, but, uh, I could see, you know, when you and Chris are done, I could see the relationship already developing right there. <laughs> Yeah, a, me woman too. That keep, a woman that keeps score at a baseball game is just is exactly all she does is keep score doesn't ask me anything I can watch this and you just keep score man that's a that's a person don't it doesn't have to be a woman I like going to games by myself I am a yeah. big going to game by myself guy and big uh, advocate good yeah, yeah I'm a huge advocate of that and I really don't like it when Chris goes because he'll say things that piss me off so like he'll be like, like lead off walks turn into runs and then like stop it stop it like hey. it's not your team you're talking about he's like well I'm just being on I'm like I don't want to hear your honesty right now like I have way too much passion when it comes to the Braves I take it very personally I live and die by every pitch usually especially in the playoffs like it it will change my mood yeah you know oh, yeah. all summer all oh. summer it will change my mood this game um it, it, what do they call it? Uh, Branch Ricky said it's uh, the it, baseball's like church. Many attend, but few understand. And <laughs> yeah. I tell you, every time I've heard that line, I go, it makes perfect sense to me. We we coach this weekend. This is a tough day. We lost two to one yesterday in a in a oh. travel ball game. Uh, Fourteen U kids. We were favored to win. We were supposed to be the the favorite team. We have a good little program, and we got beat two to one. Umpires made a couple bad calls, and we couldn't hit. And I'm reeling right now, and I'm going, I gotta. I got to meet with Sarah Tiana today. This was, a, it was like this big deal today, yesterday. And, and it, it's absurd how much it hurts on the inside. Does it not? Yeah, of course. I mean, for me, it's like baseball is not a fast game. So you're living through the pain in a very slow, drawn mm. out way. And you're constantly waiting to catch back up or for something to happen. And like, I don't know about you, but like, I hate when we're on defense, like defense is the hardest part for me to watch because I'm always like, here it comes. I mean, it, it could be, and like so many times this year, you know, you're the counts three, two, there's two outs. And then all of a sudden it's a hit. And like, you're like, no, we were just right there. We were so close to getting out of this inning and now it's over and we're uh, ruined. You know, well, it's like, 
I hate a three, two count with two outs. Like I just like, it's we, the most stressful. Yeah. We tell pitchers. So do I, by the way, I don't know why this game has been on breaking your heart. I would tell parents, if I could, if my parents were alive today, I would tell Jim and Dorothy, I'd sue them today for even get me in this damn thing. I had older brothers that played like yourself with your older sister. I would, and Hey, we all get packed up to go. We're going to get packed up to go to be miserable. Basically it's yeah. a, you know, the only enjoyment is the last out of the game. If your team's on top. Oh uh, my God. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Uh, and then, then, and for me, there's not even a big enough lead where I'm comfortable. Like, right. and I think I'm scarred because I was at the Super Bowl where the Falcons uh, played the Patriots. And, uh, you know, we were up 28 to three, you know, like, I, you know, I used to work for the Braves in the, in 99 and 2000, I was like the person that shot the t-shirts out and played all the games, you know, Yeah. Yeah. that was like my college job. And, and in 99, we went to the world series and got swept by the Yankees. It's like, no, yeah, right, 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 right. It's just like this constant turmoil. And like, and also I think that's also why I don't like people to, that I know to see me at the game because I'm like. I'm going to be stewing or I'm going to be, it doesn't matter. Like I'm not even going to be happy until the game is over. And I don't even know if I'm going to be happy. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't want people I know to see me saying like yelling at my team. No, <laughs> like, Get that bat off your shoulder. <laughs> hey Sarah, that's why you could follow. I love these masks we have. I, you know, I, and I could hide a lot of facial expression with this mask I have. And I coach these kids and parents are looking at me. What's he saying to my kid? I can be mother F I can be doing saying whatever I want out there and no one has to know as long as my eyes kind of look like they're happy. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Cause it, the, um, now you came from a small town, Calhoun, Georgia. Yeah, I mean, you Calhoun. came from Hayward, but moved to Calhoun, Georgia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why? Yes. Yeah, so Why? <laughs> great question. I asked my parents <laughs> that still. Um, so my, parents always wanted to live on the east coast yeah and my mom was um working for this company called needlecraft at the time it was like one of those places where you can like sew the needle point like with design anyway they trans they offered her a job transfer to like uh, dalton which is just north of calhoun and um and so they were paying all the expenses and my parents were like okay (laughs) <laughs> just left. let's go yeah and so they packed up me and my sister and we moved there and I absolutely hated it I couldn't believe that there were no sidewalks to ride my bike like I was like this is like torch this torture it took me a while to like it and appreciate it but um it, it looks a little bit if I may say this a little <laughs> bit like Mayberry if you if if remember you know Annie Griffith and I was if Mayberry had a drug problem. Yeah, I think there, it's probably a very, I, in an outlet mall. But um, I saw there's a big Crystal's restaurant there, right? And that's a place I assume that's that's pretty popular in Calhoun. Crystal's is White Castle, but uh, oh. the redneck, the more redneck White Castle. Yeah. Okay. Like we actually didn't have much when I moved there. Um, we uh, we didn't have a sit down restaurant or anything. Like yeah. there was no, and every place was closed on Sunday. Yeah. And most places closed at three o'clock on Wednesday for church. And so like, he, we were like these heathens coming to town. Like, oh, so <laughs> why is everything closed? Where's the yeah. liquor store? You know, well, like there was you, just like none of that. You did have the headquarters of, of General Sherman and, uh, and the home of Dr. <laughs> Wall. Now who's Dr. Wall? I don't know who the hell Dr. Wall is. I have Wall no is. idea. <laughs> I don't either. The only person I remember that was a, like that people talked about. Well, there are two big things that ever happened. Bert Lance lived there. And he was like the secretary of treasury for uh, Nixon or something. He wasn't the third like, baseman for the Braves. I know that. Burt Lance is not the third baseman. Definitely player. not. Okay. And then in the blizzard of 93, was it 93? Get you. Yeah. Uh, I believe it was the blizzard of 93. Uh, that was when like, um, it was like everyone was stuck at home for like seven days. We could nobody could leave their houses. Like a lot of people didn't have power because nobody, Georgia's not prepared for snow ever. And so, um, but Bo Jackson got stuck on her exit. And so that was like something people talked about my whole life. Wow. <laughs> he got and, stuck on her exit and he had to stay at the Holiday Inn. And so I, I think they had a, I think they had like, you know, something on the door oh that's uh, gotta be bo jackson day then whatever day that was <laughs> that's gotta be bo jackson day yeah hey, i don't know 
let me ask you a couple questions here then. So I, I the the history of, it, of of being an Atlanta fan, the losses, but then the wins. When you were growing up, were your parents involved in sports at all? Did you did you have a relationship mm-hmm. with, with your parents in sports and so forth? Yeah, yeah. So uh, my dad, my dad was uh, usually really uh, too busy with work. My dad traveled for work a lot when I was young, mm-hmm. until I was about. 12 and then he quit that job and we got really poor so that he could be home with us and like coach our teams yeah so him and my mom coached our teams um my mom played softball my whole life um she was always the only white girl on the team Mm -hmm. so I kind of like I just grew up with all these like really talented like like and supportive like group like we would always just hang out at the ball fields and watch my mom's games and um and they, and then we watched the Braves every night for dinner, you know, wow. during the season, obviously. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> so right, right. yeah, well, we would watch it with trade tables and, you know, sit in front of our trade tables and watch the games. Who was your best, who was your, uh, who was your favorite player back then? Who were some of the players? Back, back then it was always Dale Murphy when yeah. I was growing up. Yeah. Um, but we also really loved the catcher, Bruce Benedict, because Sure. Uh, and he wasn't really that good, but, but, uh, when they announced, we'll be on next go, week. I'll let him know. Oh yeah. 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 And, like that was like, as a kid, you're like, bro. Yeah. Like, you know, like cheering for something. And so like, that I was think there were the more people reason. in Calhoun. There were at some of those Braves games though, just to let you know, <laughs> yeah. I remember I honestly, with the great thing about the Turner channel, I think that was it on uh, yeah. TBS, I think, or something like is that. Yeah, TBS. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They started at 7.05, the game. Yeah, and we then watched... all the shows started five after. There you go, man. But I got, God, it's nice. To... Sarah Tiana, you're bringing back a memory. This game of baseball for me, it's about relationships <laughs> and about memories and about comparison and seeing players yeah. today and back then. I don't, I can't remember, you know, my, my, my last date. I can't remember. <laughs> I But when you mentioned, you know, uh, uh dale murphy and, and then they had they before that a guy named ralph gar i don't know if you remember that oh, i don't remember i don't know okay yeah, no. before that now you weren't around when henry aaron hit the home run though you, you no no but i have a funny story about that because um i uh i met uh dusty baker wow and it was probably like 12 years ago he was still coaching managing the giants and I was like performing stand up at a Thai restaurant in Northern California, wow. <laughs> but like in the sticks, in the <laughs> sticks. And he walks in with these like two old white dudes. And I'm like, oh my God, that's Dusty Baker. You know, like, and then people are like, who? And I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. you don't get it. And yeah. so I ended up having this long conversation with him because he played with the Braves. Yeah. And he was telling me, you know, um, that uh, he didn't want to play for Atlanta because he didn't want to go to the, to, to live in Atlanta during civil rights in the seventies and, and, and not interested, but you know, Hank was his best friend. And so he's like going back and forth and Hank's like, please, you got to come play here. You got to come play. So finally he decides to come and play. And he said, when, when Hank hit the home run that broke the record, yeah. he was on deck. And so everyone is like celebrating and going nuts. The guys run on the field. Hank comes out and does a curtain call and he's like, and then everybody left, everybody left the stadium. And he goes, and I hit a double and no one even noticed. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> like, oh, you're like still like the player in you is just like still like stewing that like, yeah, that you know, like no great, one even cared. <laughs> no one even cared. You know, he, he hits that home run off the great Al Downing. We all see the video that the two guys run around mm-hmm. second to third and, and uh, they had a special on him recently of that moment. And, uh, but you're right. No one ever knew what his next at bat was. And he hit a double. Yeah, no. I mean, the guy after the guy, I think, is always a really fascinating story. You know, the guy after the guy. That's right. That's right. Oh, so you're telling me that Baker came up next and hit a yeah. double. Is that right you're saying? Yes. He oh, was shit. after. He was oh. on deck. Yeah. When Dusty Hank hit the home. Dusty yeah. Hit. Nobody cares, Dusty. Sorry. And it's, it's never like going to change. It's like that silver medal. It's like <laughs> a silver medalist. Nobody <laughs> gives a shit. That Sorry. is so good. Don't remember who you are. That's yeah. <laughs> exactly right. Hey, now, how'd you get into the, the thing about baseball is you could see it. It's uncomfortable to watch it because there's no clock. You don't know when this game's going to end a single. You're, you can be up by six or seven runs. There's a base hit in the ninth. You're going, oh, shit. Here we go again, man. Here we go again. I've seen it done. The uncomfortness of being a stand up comic 
<laughs> playing yeah. baseball. There's got to be some comparisons and contrasts there, though. But what made you think about going up in front of a live audience and going, <laughs> I can do this? How do you prepare for something like that, if you don't mind sharing? Oh, um, yeah, you know, I never was told I was funny. I didn't know I was funny until I moved to Los Angeles. Like, I was just always really sarcastic growing up. And I definitely made people laugh, but they would always say things like, that's not funny. That's not because I was always making fun of them. Nice. Uh, and no one ever got upset because I have a sweet face. And Look at the face. Off. You're darn yeah, straight. You can so make like, fun of me people... all day, Sarah. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Most go ahead. people don't even notice. Um, and so... And then I moved to Los Angeles and I had moved out here to be an actor and um, I just couldn't even catch a cold. And um, and then people just started telling me I was funny and like dared me to go on stage. And I wrote a joke one night when I was watching the news. So I had I was like, I'll try it. And then it just worked out like it. I think growing up in theater my whole life, um, that's why I really kind of quit playing sports. It's like I was just more interested in plays and like being on stage and so being in front of a live audience was never daunting to me I never it just like I just didn't have that fear yeah uh, more just like nervous excitement like ready to go um so you didn't and, care yeah, about the results so, it's like in baseball no. and any sports you know the biggest fear I try to teach these young kids is is don't worry about the results just do the action the results will yeah. come either way but these young minds, these young kids, and you got a young, you got a son that's going to be, you get a chance to, how beautiful is that? You and your husband get a chance to raise this kid and let him, yeah. let him not be nervous about, they all want to be successful. And the game of baseball is a very unsuccessful uh, game, yes. you know, it just like acting, I assume, man, you, you just have to go in there, do your auditions, go out there, perform yeah. and hope the results are okay. Correct. Yeah. I mean, there's just so much unknown. And then like, just with like the minor league system and the way that baseball is set up, you know, like, and that's why I'm really hoping that we do get baseball this year and that the, the players association and MLB can like come to an agreement because I, I stand with the players, obviously, like, I think like their contract negotiations should not take six years. Like, because it takes you, sometimes you're not, you might be 24, 25 by the time you actually make it into the league. And then you don't actually get paid until you're 31. Like how many, like that is insane. Yeah. That doesn't happen in basketball. Like uh, basketball players come into the league when they're 19 and 20 football players come into the league. Baseball is completely different. And it's a really long game. It's such a mental game. It's not just about how physically strong you are. It's about, it's about mental toughness. And so, uh, you know, I worry about my son playing baseball. Sometimes I'm not going to, you know, we don't really want him to play football, but honestly, I'm like, is it as mentally tough to play football as it is for baseball? Because it's all in your head. That's why it's the same with golf. Like you can only beat yourself. Right. And um, right. so it's kind of like, I'm, I'm constantly telling Chris, I'm like, keep it fun, keep it fun. Don't tell him that he's doing it wrong every time. You know what I mean? Like, it's right. not, it, it's not wrong. He's just playing. God, you know, Sarah, you're, you're exactly right. The, the uh, to, to continue to, and this isn't at Chris at all, but you see youth coaches out there mm -hmm. and they're constantly um, telling kids, first of all, before they even have the act of doing anything, they want to tell them what to do. I, I think these young kids need to feel the, the best, the best advice I give a coach is to say nothing. Sometimes just mm -hmm. say nothing. Now mm -hmm. there's times we can correct. There's times hustle on and off the field. When a kid's at the play, nothing worse than seeing it. You don't see it in the big leagues. You don't see it at college. You don't really see it mm -hmm. a little bit in high school, but you don't tell the kid I've seen more coaches you got a little nine-year-old up there and he's up there already nervous. He wants to perform mm -hmm. in front of his mom and dad, his uncle, his friends, his grand. And he's scared. He's not scared of the guy, but there's a ball coming at him. And sure. he's nervous. he doesn't want to make an out because an out to a nine-year-old could be the most devastating mm -hmm. experience ever. So then you got to, yeah. you got a coach at third base going, Hey, Hey, Denny, Denny hands out up here. Skirt, you know, elbows out. And you're going, Hey brother. Do you mind just letting the kids swing it, man? Can we enjoy this experience? You know, just let, yeah. let them swing the damn thing. Can you imagine going up on stage and you got your mother or father up there going, no, 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 not that joke. No, no, hey, <laughs> hey, step over here. Now, step over there. And so instead of engaging 
with the people or, or what you're what you're supposed instead of the hitter just engaging with the pitcher it's the best one-on-one competition out there i tell all mm-hmm. our hitters that you see him on deck and they got all this they take all these lessons they're doing all these practice stuff because the, the coach they just had an yesterday who you spent a thousand dollars an hour for is telling them what to do and they're doing all their routines yet they don't even know the guy in the mound is left-handed right-handed black white chubby skinny doesn't know what he throws fastballs there's nothing so i always tell these guys make eye contact with the go mm-hmm. ahead and make eye contact with the guy introduce yourself mm-hmm. with your eyes go ahead and, mm-hmm. and then have that competition in there and i gotta assume like a like a comedian have you ever gone up there and, and, and told a joke and it didn't go well <laughs> yeah not you sarah not you <laughs> oh all the time still no. you know still. like just still. last week you know i mean but you know um and then how do you, you get a hit if you don't swing you know what i mean it's the yeah. same thing it's like yeah you, you gotta you gotta shoot and you, you gotta you know throw interceptions you gotta strike out you gotta do all kinds of stuff in right. life and and uh that all that matters is that you're trying and the uh, audience can tell that. And, and, but I think with comedy, it is like a really mental game too. Like if I'm worried or concerned about what the audience thinks about me, I will fail every time. If I'm just in my own head and reliving the moments that I'm talking about and uh, I'm, you know, and I'm just, I'm just there to impress them. I'm not worried about whether they are impressed or not. It's much more successful. So, but sometimes, you know, it's 9.30 at night and you're exhausted and like you, you've had a really long day of writing all day and then putting your son to bed and like, you know, doing all this stuff. And then you get there and you're just so mentally exhausted that it's hard to stay in that zone. Yeah. Um, it's hard to get the motivation to drive half an hour to the club and, go up right. and keep your energy there like knowing you have to be up at 6 a.m you know yeah. so it's a little challenging right now uh just in the phase of my life but you know yeah it's, it's, I tell you listening to you you know I sit here and I complain that uh, I gotta coach <laughs> three games today today we got a game by the way Harvard Westlake is a rivalry of ours I'm a coach at Notre Dame High School and so we play oh, nice Next week, uh, in fact, I got you scheduled in to r- throw out the first ball. I, I'm just gonna, <laughs> you don't have to do it. I'm just going to tell them you are doing it, and then we'll cancel oh, sure. that day. It makes me look good. Is um, it at the Notre? Is it at the Harvard Westlake field? It's at Tuesday. It's at Notre Dame. Dame. Wednesday, it's at Harvard Westlake, and Friday, it's at Notre Dame. And it's oh at, my gosh, yeah, it's at we we play each team in our league a three game series. Both of oh Harvard Westlake and Notre Dame are two strong baseball programs and uh and it's an yeah. enjoyable it's always packed houses and the you haven't been to notre dame high school yet but it's got a it's uh who's the guy that swings sweet uh that's saying sweet caroline what's the guy's name neil diamond, neil diamond. Yep. <laughs> so when we opened up i know you're laughing at me seriously how do i get on this podcast i'm laughing at the voice off to the side uh, yeah like big rob producer- you your <laughs> intel <laughs> producer rob the best i i'm alexa yeah exactly. here. that's sure. what it is right um mm-hmm. i will tell you though uh so he sang sweet caroline when you opened up the stadium about eight years ago it's about a four million dollar stadium if you ever get a chance when cage gets older wow. you're looking for high schools i know harvard westlake the fields are there but we'd love to have you come on by notre dame and, and take a look at that place it's gorgeous oh, i'd love to yeah, it, yeah no i'd love to i mean obviously like we always just talk about harvard westlake because max freed went there Yes. And, you know, you know, and he went there with the other, th- the tri Yeah, Giolito. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and I know. Clarity. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, uh, you know, kind of a cool historical place in my mind, just because I know Max went there. I'm a big yeah, fan he, of his. But hang on, Sarah. If I can, <laughs> this is our first argument. We had, okay. we had John Carlos Stanton. Okay. John okay. Stanton the head of the strikeout king. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> He came to practice a couple of days ago. God, I wish I had you on before that. Let him know that. Yeah. That's so funny. I saw him at, we saw him at, um, a couple of years ago when I was pregnant at Tiffany Haddish's birthday party. And, uh, and Chris leans over to me and he goes, you think he's striking out with the ladies too? Oh. <laughs> and I was like, we were just like dying laughing. And then, uh, and then Billy Crystal was there yeah. because him and Tiffany were doing a movie. And, you know, he's giant, big Yankees. Guy. And, like, he was just, like, Im- immediately pissed at Stanton before <laughs> because just for the past, 
you know like it was just yeah. so funny how like you're like this is like one of the greatest baseball players playing right now and we still are like well you know if it's hey. not on your team you're like mm, a little <laughs> bit more critical you know what? The Braves win one World Series, and we're going to be cocky and rip everybody else. We've okay. won two. We've okay. won two. You have won two. That's exactly. That's exactly right. Man. My favorite manager is was Bobby Cox. You know, he's oh, one of the best. Sure. And you're like team, rocking like Leo Mazzoni right now. Leo, I, 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 he, I tell you, as a, I could do the Leo Mazzoni all day long. Oh. I understood it. Now I understood. Mm-hmm. You know, you start mimicking mm-hmm. coaches. Why does he do that? Because if he's not doing this, it's just eating me up inside during games, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, sure. It's, it's I get it. Right. Yeah. Hey, I get that, it. To- that tomahawk chop, though, chop, do we, is that, is it that intimidating? I've never been to an Atlanta game. When that <laughs> going, is it, it sounds loud on TV. Oh, it's very loud when you're there. Um, you know, the, the organization has done a lot to, you know, try to stop. But the more you tell rednecks to not do something because of politics, the more they want to do it. So it's really a bad idea to tell them not to. Also, everybody that keeps writing me articles about it are like these old white dudes. Um, (laughs) And there's like never quotes from Native Americans. Like there's never, it's never, and we're just like, and as a fan, I'm like, listen, it's not important to me. Yeah. You know, we constantly try, you know, this year we had the sword slash last year we had mix it up. Like the players are trying to do stuff to change it, but yeah. the crowd doesn't want to. And, and we're, and the Cherokee nation who were corporate, like who's the sponsor of the Braves and like, we're like in a huge affiliate. They're all season ticket holders. Like we have a whole month devoted to, the uh, Native American appreciation, like, and like all these like sit downs, you know, constantly. And like, yeah. they're never like, stop doing the chop. <laughs> like yeah. nobody ever yeah. says that. Yeah. It's only like, yeah. it, it only seems like virtue signaling white people to me. And like, listen, I'm not like attached to it. I don't really care. I don't have a dog in the fight, but I'm just like, if you have the intel to support like, hey, this is super offensive. And these are the people who are upset. then I'd love to hear that. Right, 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 right. But, <laughs> but I, it's I, not. But when it first started, it was huge. Because yeah. and my mom and I always said we started it because we used to do it at our high school because we were the Warriors, uh-huh. and um, and then Deion Sanders claimed it. So because he came from Florida State. That's right. So I'm like, That's really, right. if you have a beef with the chop, you should take it out with Deion Sanders because he started. Yeah. It. yeah. Hey, now. I'm going to piggyback. I, I'm going to mimic the Rich Eisen show a little bit. I never, I, I met Rich about three weeks ago at Sherman Oaks Little League. He's got a son. Oh, hello. Yep. Cooper. He, Co- yeah. yeah, exactly right. And uh, Cooper's swinging. He's young. And he, and, 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 uh, and I saw Rich and it, it like, if I would have seen you, I would have, I'm not shy to go up there and say, Rich, I'm a huge fan of yours. I just want to say that huge fan Good. of yours, not knowing that your husband works right there next and watching <laughs> yeah. Rick and Chris go together. That that's really fun to yeah. watch, but Never. This, what he brought up now, Chris, your husband uh, is a Red Sox fan. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and we all joke, Red Sox, Braves, Red Sox, Braves. Is it pretty tense at home sometimes with when the, speaking of uh, really? No. Cause we don't really play against each other. Like we play against each other once a year, usually during yeah. early play. Um, there's never really that much. Yeah, like we're not rivals. Not at, we're no, not, not in at the all. same division. We're not in the same league. So it's like this. It's it was more of the Patriots that we always like kind of yeah. butted heads about. And I never, you know, I've never seen Chris. I did see him on that YouTube once the Braves won the World Series. I don't think Chris had a shirt on. Is that correct? I'm just going to bring <laughs> yes. that up. Tell him I apologize. I'm, I'm just seeing on social media. I know nothing. But is that yeah, yeah. I don't think we expected a to win that night and b to just like be putting those videos out. I also like completely blo- I don't have any recollection of making those videos because I, I was no. a hammered and b just like so out of it was like a complete out of body experience that I don't even yeah yeah um, yeah, yeah yeah no yeah I, I love it Rich kept saying uh just throw a shirt on just throw a shirt. and yeah, I understood just, that I yeah <laughs> so no. great man He's, and, uh, uh, and, and I want to say please let your husband know it's all respect I love the way these guys know I think it's <laughs> To, to listen to Rich and your husband in baseball and listen to you, my God, Sarah, I had no idea. I'm sitting here going, God, does she know sport? I'm just being honest. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Maybe it's my, my old 
old man mentality of, I don't know, we'll see. I know I got Sarah Tiana here. I'm going to speak whatever she wants. And you start throwing terms and games. And I start reading, <laughs> going, oh, this girl knows more than I do about the game, man. I'm just going uh, to, I'm Maybe. just going to feed her and take it from there. Um, do you, do you, uh, are you going to coach your kid when he gets older? No, no way. Definitely not coaching him. Like, I don't want, I, you know, I'll be there. I'll, I'll be there at every game, whatever he wants to play, but with the scorebook, with the scorebook. Yeah. 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 And, no, and... I just want to be, um, his champion and his supporter, whatever he decides to do. So now, Sarah, I got to ask you, I don't mean to cut you off. You are the star here. I, and I'm excited as hell to have Sarah Tiana on here. I'm just damn excited. <laughs> But that scorebook and your son, what's your son in cage, I believe, correct? Cage, yeah. That's over mm -hmm. social media. Once again, I don't want you, mm -hmm. once I know you came, were coming on, it was same, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I had to go in there and do a bunch of, just look and find and look and find. So I know now how people can actually stalk people. It's, it's, it's not that difficult. It's all out there, whether you like it or not. But I, so that's yeah. out there. But when your son cage comes up, He's eight years old. It's a ground ball, and it goes through the legs of the shortstop. If it doesn't hit the shortstop's glove, is that a base hit or an error? You're keeping score, and you're also the mother, my friend. So I got to know the, what's the answer for that. If it doesn't hit the glove, yeah, but it went it through, goes his through his legs. Yes, it's an yeah. error. Okay, I just carry it. Okay. <laughs> now on the way home, he got an ice cream, and he That's says, "Mommy, e I got six. what's that? E six, right?" And it happened three times, and he gets in the car and says, "Hey, mommy." I got three hits today. Do you sit there and say, Cage, no, you didn't, young man. Those are not hits. Or, or do you say, let's talk about this a little bit. You know? I say, yeah, you got on base three times. Yes, you <laughs> did. Very That's good. exactly Very right. Good. That's exactly right. Now, <laughs> uh, is is a uh, Robin, is are you guys is it baseball or football? What's the what's the sport that you guys are most um, involved in? Or is it all of them? It seems to be probably like baseball. Like we we're bigger baseball fans than anything yeah. um love football yeah. love call i'm a big college football guy chris is more of a basketball guy too yeah. the celtics yeah. are kind yeah. of his like um favorite basketball yeah. team but well good year to be it. college football you bring that up because yeah. flipping georgia yeah. won the national championship you want to yeah. get there's gotta and be matthew stafford won the super bowl so i've had Please. quite the uh i've had yeah. quite the run that's exactly well, we can agree on that. I'm a Rams fan and you'd staff for yeah. We're season ticket holders for the Rams and like oh. got them because of Todd Gurley. Any of my Georgia boys that play in the NFL, I follow. Actually, my voicemail said you've reached Sarah Tiana and Matthew Stafford since 2009 when he got drafted. Oh, so if you call my phone, it still says that. And yeah. I tell Cage that that's his stepdad every time we watch him, just in <laughs> case I ever have to like. <laughs> make the I transition it. i want him to be comfortable with the term <laughs> yeah yeah you know you sound so kind and, and, I, and i and i and i appreciate you being on here i did see something on youtube where you guys go back and forth the comedians i forget what it's called i have it written somewhere roast battle yeah roast battle mm -hmm. and i gotta tell you man i don't like those other guys okay i got <laughs> jealous and pissed all right but till yeah. i saw you respond and went oh no she's fine up there on her own she's gonna be just yeah. fine up there and the other one um, I wanted to bring up, the other one is there was a 2016, you know, I am new in that skit that did an SNL when the guy was interviewing somebody who's a big, I forget the big guy. And he's remember the time, remember the time. And so I'm running that at you right now. And I apologize. I, I feel Chris like, a, for, yeah, Chris Farley had a guy on the skit and he said, remember the time. And, and I'm throwing stuff at you uh, like a little boy. I don't, I'm, I love Bill Burr on stage. I did not like the exchange, exchange between you and Bill Burr back in 2016, man. I oh, you're talking about at the uh, Big Poppy roast? Uh, it was seven comedians up there. It was a political thing. The Trump thing was mentioned. You, oh, that, oh, that was off. the... Uh, it, yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, that was the End of the World podcast with Joe Rogan and Doug Stanhope. And yeah, yeah, people still come after me for that just because Bill and I disagree. But I'm like, after we disagree you, all the time. Yeah. yeah, like Bill's fans like come after me and like tell me, you know, just tell me oh, I need to die in the middle of the street, stuff like that. But it's like, but I'm always like, how many arguments have you gotten into with Bill Burr? There you go. Yeah. You yeah. Go. yeah. It's yeah. like, it's like, uh, who is it? Like some, like, it would be like, you know, like the, the uh, a pitcher giving up a home run in the World yeah. Series and like people still like give him shit. And it's like, well, how many home runs have you given up in the World Series? Well said. It's like, been done. Doesn't happen. Yeah. Right? Doesn't happen. Yeah. You don't. You never been there. So yeah. Stop, stop it. My dad used to always say that. Hey, where have you ever been? That was his biggest yeah. line when a guy would say something. He'd say, "My dad played minor league baseball. My brothers yeah. all played it." Uh, and his biggest line was, 
where'd he ever play? Where'd he ever play? Yeah. Like, right, okay. Yeah. And, and who cares? But that's it. That's it. I wanted to, yeah. if I see Bill Burr, which I never will, but I'm just telling you because of my ego, I want to be tough guy Tuesday right now. Mm -hmm. If I see Burr, I'm going to let him know. I'm going to tell him exactly what I think of. I got your back, Sarah. I got, because you and I are close, <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, so you handled it. Funny, like the next day, he like people are like coming after me, like, because I, like Bill and I would argue all yeah. the, like, but never, I guess, on in public on a podcast or something that everybody heard. Right. And the next day he was like, are we in an argument? And I go, no, <laughs> we just disagreed on Michelle Obama. Like, it's really not that. No, we were also pretty hammered. We were drinking a lot of um, bourbon that night. Yeah, it happens. It was the end of the world. Yeah. Yeah. When I drink bourbon <laughs> and it's been a while, but when I do drink bourbon, I, things go really south. They just, yeah. especially when I'm coaching kids during out the day, it doesn't go well. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't go well. Um, yeah. Hey, have you, uh, we're getting almost done here and I really appreciate your time doing this, Sarah. It's okay. I, yeah, I really do. My friend, I can't tell you what's coming up next for you. Someone like me that mm -hmm. has now I'm, I'm getting closer to you. I'm getting closer here now to follow you and sit in the front row and just stare at you and go remember uh -huh. me. All right. <laughs> what do you got coming up? Anything coming up soon or, um, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm writing on a bunch of stuff. So yeah. I, uh, you know, I've been writing for Kevin Hart and Snoop Dogg for a long time and wrote for Spade for a long time so it's kind of like and I sold a Christmas movie so I um I've been finishing that up and then um uh and I produce a podcast with this guy Rick Ingram at the comedy store Rick is like one of the best crowd work comics in the world wow. um that's what he does on stage he just like talks to people in the crowd so we do a podcast called um Rick Ingram Talks to Strangers and it's just him interviewing people from twitter and instagram that he's never met yeah i tell you, your twitter's I, during games i love you throwing that <laughs> I, you know i i was never twitter's I for we're that? all watching the same thing that's what twitter's for to me you know absolutely I mean? absolutely no it works i mean if, if you haven't seen sarah tiana and, and you know i don't have as following as eisen or ingram or you i i <laughs> but the following's big enough to where if you haven't seen sarah out there i highly recommend um us rookies we're this would be this is this would be like um um dale murphy or freddie freeman coming down and playing in a rehab a ball game that's what you're doing right now okay if that's the, that's the analogy i have and you got players now teammates going shit shit we got yeah. in the lineup we got we got tiara in the lineup we got tiara in the lineup with us right now and then we want to be friends afterwards but the truth is you're leaving for Atlanta the next day to go play with the big boys. But yeah, but yeah. We, yeah. But we, I can use this story to say, yeah, now Sarah, <laughs> we played together. Yeah. Back in, uh, well, it was one day it was for 45 minutes and, uh, and that, that's how it rolls around here. Uh, I, I appreciate you, you coming in here. What is, do you want, what is your social, um, what's your social or your, uh, it's just uh, at Sarah Tiana on Instagram and Twitter, Sarah with an H Tiana with the T with a Tiana. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. Like good. a tiara, but with an N. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, you're awfully fun, man. Um, Thanks. I, now, here's what so I want you. you to do. If you can, love to get Chris on here, okay? I'm putting oh, it yeah. out there. If you can get Chris out of here, I had any idea, but seeing him today and, and watching him and watching the three of you, Eisen and, and Chris and you, um, if you could talk to Chris and say, hey, man, that Denny, it's not that bad. It, it is the minor leagues. Right. But, you know, Chris, go ahead and get some rehab and get some work done. Just get some... You know, work on hitting the ball the other way. Work on drag button. <laughs> what do you think about the shift before we get off? What do you think about the shift? In, 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 oh, in I hate baseball? the shift, but it is what it is. I don't see it stopping. You know what I mean? Like, I don't see it yeah. moving, but I love when people hit out of it. So, yeah, it's like, um, well, like a little bit of revenge. Just yeah, when Freddie can go the, you know, I mean, that's why, like, I'm really excited to get Acuna back this year because he would go oppo all the time. And, and he's just like, you know, uh, and Ozzy Albies on our team is also yeah. pretty good at hitting out of the shift and placing it. And so, you know, I think the shift will continue to be used until it's not uh, useful anymore. Um, but there's a lot of analytics in baseball. Yeah. And yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm watching Freeman. Uh, uh, there's a video about a 14 minute video. He worked out with his dad. He's a local boy. He's from Southern California. I know Freeman. he's from Orange County. That's why I'm not, I won't be surprised if he comes to the Dodgers. Like he got us a ring and I'm already, I'm very thankful for that. 
Right. It makes sense that he grew up here, that he would play there. Yeah. Um, I don't think you'll win when you get him, but so I'm not really worried. Well, Sarah's really nice talking to you. Thanks a lot. That's <laughs> You're not, welcome. You know it's nice to talk to you, too. I, God dang it. You know what? It was really fun till the very end. I should have cut this mm-hmm. damn thing off right there. Mm-hmm. No, but my story on Freeman was he'd work out with his dad, and they'd go to El Modena High, by the way, and that's mm-hmm. uh, and he's big on going the other way. He taught mm-hmm. kids how to hit off the tee and he looked that top left corner and hit off the tee and go the other way. And the truth is, if you watch him hit, a lot of his balls are right are left center. He goes the other mm-hmm. way very well. Mm-hmm. If he gets something in, he'll turn on it and go with it. But uh, what a fun guy to watch and the work ethic he's had, like the work ethic you do to be writing, performing, now a mother. I mean, I'll tell you what, it's not easy sometimes. I got to imagine, you know, I can't, I definitely gotta, not easy no. definitely not easy but it's fun you know it never feels like work so that's it that's that's when you know it's it's a it's a good profession yeah hey you're awesome I, i'll thank gary man and uh and i thank you sarah no don't do that don't thank gary you did this you know what i won't then i in fact i won't do that I wouldn't. i'm out yeah. he's out he's completely out it's the sarah and denny show today i've always wanted <laughs> to say that i don't care there's you know, mm-hmm. you got uh, uh, you got Lopes and Russell and you got now it's, it's Sarah and Denny just for 40 minutes. That's how it was, my mm-hmm. friend. OK, that's all thank we you. Need. Yeah, that's all we need. Thank you. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. OK, You're very I'll, welcome. I'll, uh, I'll appreciate you. One though. second. Oh. Sarah. We're going to use you for yeah. a promo just real quick. Thank you. Bye. Oh, sure. Yeah. So look right into the camera and say, hey, that's Sarah Tiano. Episode forty one this week. Join us; it's a lot of fun. Okay, we'll t- we use that as a promo. With Sarah, and, right? There. And Sarah can. Uh, Why doesn't she do it? She's so much better looking. She, absolutely. I mean, seriously, I didn't want to shit. say that. Um, <laughs> Hold on one second. Hold on, because oh. my headphones are dying. So I'm just gonna take it out, and then I'll do it without the. Okay. It's just real easy. Say, hey, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. And you can just wave, Sarah, when he said mentions your name. Um, so and- we got Sierra Tiana. Yeah. episode 41 episode 41 we're having a lot of fun yeah uh, talking baseball Sarah, not sierra sarah fuck sierra <sighs> that's fuck. Not you know you what man sierra, that's the first i fucking was saying excuse me now i was <laughs> fucking saying that going sierra tana sierra it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's it sarah happens all the time don't does it? even it's does not. it God. yeah it. That's the baseball coach coming out. I mean, the whole. Yeah. I put there, lineups there. together. Sorry, sorry the, about that. The coach, the kids will say, "Denny, uh, coach, is, is that me? That's you. Just go with it. <laughs> Just go with it. Of course, that's you." Hey, we're at ep- okay. You ready? Yep. Hey, we are episode forty-one with the Sarah Tiana. We talk about Calhoun, Georgia. We talk about Atlanta Braves. We talk about the Dodgers, and we talk about just playing the game and enjoying life. Thanks for joining us. Go Braves. Go Braves. Perfect. Thank you. Sarah, thank you. Welcome. I really appreciate it. Thanks again. All right. Nice meeting you guys. Uh Bye. Bye -bye. (laughs) Bye-bye. That's great.